Salim. My name is Maulian. I'm a founder of Kandia Social Cafe. And I'm here on the behalf of Ayman and her mother. <coughs> Ayman is 29, has epilepsy and autism. When she was first diagnosed, she had first, uh, her first stroke. She had to leave school. She had to sit at home for more than 10 years in full isolation. No friends, no work, no education. Her mother had to leave her job and enter welfare to take care of her daughter full time. Her mother loves her, like all mothers do, but she doesn't know how to take care of her. The result, they both are depressed. It was called a valley of despair. Her father has left her as well, because that's what fathers do in Palestine when their kid is sick. And it's nothing is done if we were to come to them a month later, she would have gone to the category which is called fully unemployable, fully disabled, which means she can be legally experimented on without her permission. She lives in a closed institution, locked up from the society. Ayman is one of 150,000 people in Kazakhstan, like her. This is a population of whole Alexandria, Virginia. And in this city, people don't have friends, don't have interactions, and don't have rights and opportunities. In my hometown, out of all people with disabilities who are in line for a job, only 3% are employed. Out of them, people with mental disabilities are almost non-existent. The government inefficiently spends $150 million each year on treating people like I'm in hospitals, on keeping them away from society because they present the danger, putting them on sedation, on outdated drugs, and repeating the cycle again. We started from the very grassroots. We took Ayman and people like her, another 20 folks, and trained them to wash dishes, to help around the house, to get out and buy something for the house. We first worked on healing the family. We taught the mother how to do it with the medical psychologist, how to do it well, how to do the rehabilitation. Then we developed acceptance in the society. We have interviewed volunteers, we have more than 100 volunteers who work now, and most importantly, 150 ladies and gentlemen who are in our workshops, who are training, and have first friends and interactions in their lives, who have left their house for the first time in their lives. Most importantly for them, and mental health. Half of our kids were misdiagnosed. If had only autism, he was diagnosed as schizophrenia although he didn't have. We provided better mental health, we provided specialists who could help them diagnose correctly and put the rehabilitation. For example, Ayman would have been hospitalized six times a year before working. During her working condition, she was hospitalized zero times. Then, after we've started training people in our facility, uh, and we've had more than 100 people coming and training for free, we discussed that they want to make money now, they want to contribute, they want to be independent fully. But nobody would employ them. Firstly, because of stigma, people said they will break stuff, people said they will hurt themselves and hurt my clients. They themselves said I cannot do it. The psychiatrist said they can work only two hours a day, some only four hours a day. And then we realized we need to open our own restaurant, which we did. Food with purpose. Where we provided such a good service that we have about 30,000 guests this year interacting and talking with our staff. We have our staff who went from not being to eat without assistance to being able to service, to bring home income, and we have this liberated and healed family and the community. It proves to itself to be sustainable as well, because in our cafe we use the disabilities and peculiarities of our <coughs> beneficiaries to the advantage. Our teammates are never late to work, our teammates treat every guest as the best friend ever. Our teammates 
have never had any issue with discipline, and I know this because it, throughout the year I had to fire four people who were healthy employees. <laughs> we have now 22 amazing teammates employed at Kunje Cafe. And what I'm most proud of, we have six graduates of Kunje. These are the people who entered the rehabilitation, the training, went to Kunje, worked there, got experience, and then we were able to find a job in another restaurant. Another six places that are being opened. So we took this model and we showed the government that theirs is inefficient. Our next goal is to work together with the government to scale this model, to put it in every city in Kazakhstan, so, there, so that there is an opportunity inherent ability and the right to exercise this right of freedom, to pursue their happiness, and become independent members of the society. I want to introduce you once again. This is Ayman. She works at Sunday Cafe. These are her friends. She likes watching friends on TV, and likes hanging out with them after the work in the movie cinema. Thank you.